This is a video for how to assemble the automata box for um, unit three in Introduction to Engineering Design. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure we're in our correct project folder when we start. So I'm going to click on projects. And if you've watched previous videos, we made the parts and we created a project folder before we made those parts. So we want to make sure that we have our correct project file created. So I'm going to say done right here because we do and when I go to open you can kind of see here just to double check and make sure here's all the parts for the uh, box that we're going to create so I just want to make sure that all of those are there and I'm going to go ahead and get out of this and then we're going to create something new which is called an assembly file so we can go to file and go to new and we can go to English and we've been dealing with IPT files which are inventor part files now we're going to deal with IAM files which are inventor assembly files so I'm going to click on standard IAM and I'm going to click on create. And then that's going to open this up. So the first piece that we are going to want to place is going to be the bottom piece. So you're going to see up here in the top left, there's something you might see the word place. Um, you might see different things, but up here you see this arrow pointing down. There's a thing called place from content center. Content center is a list of pre-made files. So when you look at, when I rest my mouse here, you notice this picture comes up with all these different types of screws, there's bolts, there's nuts, there's all kinds of stuff that's already created that you don't have to remake. So if you think about going to, let's say, like a nuts and bolts aisle at Lowe's or Home Depot or something, all of those parts are already in here. They're standard ANSI American National Standards Institute parts. Those are already loaded into Inventor. What we're gonna do is we're gonna place an object that we've created. So I'm gonna click on place. And I'm gonna click on bottom because that's the first one we're gonna place and I'm gonna say open. And when I zoom out, you can notice it gives me an X and a Y and a Z. So I only have one bottom to the automata box. So I'm gonna left click to place and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say okay. So you're gonna notice over on the left, it says that this is our bottom piece. What I'd like to do is I'd like to rotate this to where when we look at it, we're looking at this as if though it's laying on the bottom. So one thing we want to do is we're going to go to front and we're going to arrow up and then I'm going to go up to the top right hand corner up here and we want to change it to where this piece on the bottom because this is like looking at the automata box where this piece is laying on the bottom. But what we want to do is we want to change our view cube to where this becomes our home view. So when we click on home, we get this view. So come up to your view cube and you're going to right click and go down to set current view as home and go to fit to view. And now we click on our home button it'll automatically give us that. Now one thing we want to do also is we want to change our front view to this flat surface over here. Because when we look at our automata box, we want to be looking into the interior cavity of it. So I'm going to click on the word bottom. And I'm going to right click on the word bottom. I go to set current view as, and I'm going to go to the word front. And automatically now, this is our front view. I click on my house. I click on the word front. And now all of that has changed. This is going to help us greatly when putting together our, our automata box. Now, this object right here, since we placed it first, we want it to be completely and totally unmovable. We want it to be on the bottom of our object, and this is kind of like the cornerstone, if you will, of our automata box. So what we want to do is we want to take away its degrees of freedom. Now, in Activity 7.4 Assembly Models, they go over what degrees of freedom are. So degrees of freedom basically means that any object can rotate around an axis or move along an axis. The way that I show this to my students is I grab a broomstick and a roll of masking tape, and I can spin that roll of masking tape around the broomstick and I can slide it up and down it. Those are the two motions that something has. So you can go along and around the X, along and around the Y, and along and around the Z. Those are the six degrees of freedom. When we place our bottom view into Inventor, we want to eliminate all of its degrees of freedom to where it can't move. So what we can do for that is we come over to our browser bar and we right click and we go down to the word grounded. And you're gonna see this push pin show up in Inventor. And if I click on this object and try to drag it, it won't move, it's stuck. When I teach this, I say it's as if though we took 100 nails and screwed this thing into the ground. It's not going to move. It's gonna remain exactly where it is. So that's kind of how we want to go about placing this object. So that is our bottom piece. We're going to go about placing now our side pieces for this object. So we're going to come up here to place. And we have two side pieces to our object. We have a side on the left and a side on the right. So I'm going to click on open. And I want to click.
click somewhere over here, and I'm going to click somewhere over here on this side, and I'm going to right click and say OK. You've placed two pieces to the object. So now what we want to do is we kind of want to rotate these objects to where they're kind of standing up straight. We can do this in multiple different ways. Um, some people like to go in and just automatically start constraining, which we're going to get into here in a minute, but I kind of like to have my students actually start moving things around. So there's two different types of rotates. On the right hand side of your screen, you're probably going to see this thing that says free orbit. You can click on that object and it'll move everything. That's like rotating everything on your window. You can also come up here to your view cube and hold down and pivot things around as well. You can also do things that way. I want to rotate just one object. So what I want to do is tap on that object. And in the top left hand corner, there's something that says free rotate. Now I'm going to rotate that object around until it looks like it's standing flat. So I'm trying to make sure the wider part is kind of standing up like this. I'm going to right click and say OK. I'm going to tap on this object over here and come up to free rotate. And then that allows me to rotate just one part. So as I rotate around, I kind of want this to kind of be right about here. I can right click and say OK and kind of drag that object closer to the object. So the main thing we'll deal with when we constrain objects are is mating and flushing objects. So again, in 7.4, when we go back here, here's all the different types of constraints that you can do within the constraint toolbar. There's mating and flushing, there's angle constraints, we'll get into that another time, tangent and insert. Um, these are all ways we can put together objects. These don't involve making objects, they involve us putting things together. So if you went to the store you know, and bought a bookshelf, um, this is basically us putting together that bookshelf in Inventor. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna use a mate constraint. So I'm gonna go to constrain, and I wanna constrain this face I'm going to use my view cube and look at the bottom to this face. I want these two faces to touch. You're going to notice you heard a little pop. And what that did after I say apply is these two are now on the same plane. They are now touching each other. This is vertical and it's staying on this object right here. So it's as if though you put, let's say, a book vertically on a desk and you can slide that book all over the desk wherever you want it to go. Now I'm going to go to constraint and I'm going to go to flush, which is right over here. <coughs> Excuse me. Flush, right here. What flush does is forces two uh, surfaces to meet on the same plane. So when I go to flush, if you watch this, I can click here and click here, and now they're on the same plane, and I say apply. What that means now is that I can't, let me try to drag this to the bottom left. It, will, it stays like it's sliding on the desk. I can't move it off. It stays there. Next move. I'm going to come around to the other side and go to constraint flush and I'm going to click on this side and I'm going to click on that side and I'm going to say apply. Now when I go to my house button, I want you to notice that I can't drag this off of here. It is mated, the surface is mated down on top of here. I did a flush constraint to the side and I did a flush constraint to the opposite side over here. It's stuck, it won't move. I still have zero degrees of freedom for the object. This object has zero degrees of freedom. It's as if though you glued this object onto the side and it's not moving. Let's do the other side. I'm gonna click and drag this up. It's always good to kind of drag things around if you wanna like view them in a different way. And I'm gonna to go to constraint. And again, we're gonna do a mate constraint. Mate is just like magnet. It's like I wanna force two faces to touch like a magnet would. So when I'm in mate, I'm gonna click on the bottom. And I'm gonna click on the bottom of this object and automatically it's going to make those two faces together and I say apply. I'm going to go up to my flush constraint. Flush. This face to that face. Flush. Say apply. This face to this face. Apply. And we've now placed our two sides onto our automata box. Now we're going to go ahead and place the back onto the object and then we'll put the top on and then we should be pretty close to done. So I'm going to go up to place, and I'm going to find the back, and I'm going to say open. And we only have one back, so I'm going to place it, left click to place, right click, and then say OK. I kind of want to stand this up vertically. This could be a little bit more of a challenge if I just go to mate uh, and here to here. So you don't have to rotate it up. In fact, let's just try this. Let's go to constrain and see where I'm in mate, and let's see without me rotating it. I'm going to click on that surface and say, you know, mate that surface to that surface. Oh, and it stands right up. That's nice. Cool. Uh, you can go up and free rotate it. Sometimes that'll help you with other type of objects. And I'm going to say apply. 
Now we know that this surface and the opposite surface over here touch. So I'm going to click on this surface, use my view cube and come around, and I'm going to say you touch that surface. And now I'm going to say apply. So we have two mated constraints. Notice how this will slide. I can't go to the left or the right. See if you do that? And as I go like this, it comes back through the back. We can see it pretty much aligns perfectly there. What I want to do now is use a flush constraint between this surface and this surface. So I'm going to go to constraint, flush this surface and that surface, and say apply. We now have our back on. Now you're going to notice right in here, it looks like I have a little bit of a gap. Just a little bit of a gap. We can address that maybe at another time. I'll, I'll address that at the end. I'll address that at the end. No big deal. We're going to go ahead and get out of this. If you don't have the gap, that's okay. If you have a gap right there, no problem at all. So, we're going to go ahead and place the top onto the object. Let's go to place. I'm going to go to top, and I'm going to say open. And notice, nice, it automatically lays flat. Perfect. I'm going to right click and say okay. Just think about how would you go about putting the top onto this object? Well, it's just like putting together anything else in the real world. You're just doing it in Inventor. So I would probably go ahead and, and you know, place the top on top of the object. I'm going to place it right here. And I'm going to say apply. You can do multiple ways, but I'm going to go to flush. And I'm going to say flush this face to this face. And it shifts over. And I say apply. And go ahead and flush that face to that face. And say apply. And real quick, while we're done, let's hit the house button here. That flips around. Now I can see the inside of this thing. That's what we wanted, right? Our front view is going to look right in the middle where we see all these cams. Let's go ahead and say save. And we're going to call this automata box. And enter and hit save. Now we talked before about editing pieces. Now I could come over, I could go back and go to open and say, you know what? that back part's messed up, so I kind of want to go to open again, and then I'm going to come over here and change a bunch of things. There's an easier way to do that. It is very true that you could come into here and right click and go to edit sketch, and come up here and change this number, and it's automatically going to change within your assembly. So I'll show you something ridiculous while we're here. I'm just going to change this four and a half to a five and hit enter, and when I go to finish sketch, um, when we go back to our assembly down here at the bottom, you're going to notice that, yeah, it changed, but man, that's way outside the object now, isn't it? If I flip around, can you see that little edge right there? We Our back went through the object, and I don't want that. I'm going to go back to my back piece down here, and I'm going to go to undo. I hit undo a couple times. Undo is up here at the top left. Undo, say, finish sketch. I don't want to edit this piece all by itself. I want to edit it within the assembly. So here's an easy way to learn how to edit parts within assembly. I'm going to get out of my part, and I'm going to say I don't want to save it. And I'm going to go ahead and go back to my object here, and I still have this little gap. So. I want you to notice how I'm using the corners of my view cube to see objects. Here's a little gap in here, right? A cool thing to do. Remember, we're in an assembly constraint. I'm going to double click on the back piece, and you're going to notice automatically in my browser bar, you can see the back is highlighted. Everything else is grayed out. The back piece has only a white background. Good deal. We're going to click on our pencil, and I'm going to click on just this little side surface over here, and it's going to rotate for me. Now, first, entre first uh, step into something known as project geometry. We're going to click on the word project geometry and go to project geometry. And what project geometry does is it projects existing geometry. I don't want to go in and draw a rectangle over the top of all this. I don't want to do that. What I want is I want to just take these lines I see here, and I want to create a rectangle from something that already exists. So I'm going to come right in. I'm going to click here. I'm going to click here. You're going to notice they show up in yellow. Up here to the top, I click on the top up there, click on the bottom down here, and I have a close sketch now. I'm going to right click and say OK. I have a close sketch in here. Now we could go up and grab a hold of rectangle and draw over the top. We could do that, but this already exists now because I'm just taking existing geometry. And I'm going to go to finish sketch. And we're going to be able to go to extrude. And I'm going to click inside that object. It's not going to let me, is it? Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. So. There's an easy way to do that. So I'm just going to come over to my browser bar, if it didn't let me, and right click and go to Edit Sketch. And I will go ahead and draw a rectangle now. Sometimes if it only gives you this, this part off the side up here, it won't recognize it. So we do have to go back and draw a rectangle. Let's click on our two-point rectangle. Top left, down here to the bottom right, and go to Finish Sketch. 
now we have that. Now when I go to extrude, it's automatically going to see that. Now we could go back and do a measurement and say how far off are we, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, we're going to go to the word distance. And you know, when we extrude, we can put in numbers and say we want a numerical distance, but when we're putting together assemblies, we can make it go until it hits a wall. And I want you to click on the word tool. And I'm going to grab my view cube and I'm going to flip around. And I'm going to zoom in and I want it to go until it hits this little wall in here and close that gap. And I say, okay, it says it won't let me. So I'm going to go to extrude again. Maybe I clicked on the wrong thing and I just go to two next. And two next means go until you hit anything that you see and say, okay, it's failing to do it for me. So problems you run into with making a video. So I have this little gap right here. So let's come back into here and I'm going to double click on it again and go to extrude. And let's see if it'll go to two and if I have the right surface. I maybe I had the wrong surface. Yeah, that's going to fill in that gap now. I clicked on this surface right here and I say okay and it automatically made it. I had just clicked on the wrong surface. I think I was accidentally clicking on the interior surface. I used the view cube and got around and clicked on a better surface. I had a better view. So now when I go to return and I go back, you'll notice that's automatically filled in. We could have gone up and measured it. We don't have to. So let's say save. Do you want to save the automata box and all of its dependents? That means I'm going to save all of the parts and the assembly itself. I'm going to say, okay, please do. Before I end the video, I want to show you a kind of a cool tool that you can use to just check your measurements. You can go to tools up here at the top and go to the word distance on the left. And I can say from here to here, give me a distance and see that blue line automatically it's five inches. Nice. Kind of a way to go about measuring your stuff. So once again, this is how to put together the automata box and a demonstration of how to edit a part in an assembly file.